How you doing? Welcome to my channel. My name is King Prince, also known as Ant Mills, Anthony Miller. Also known as a spiritual warrior. And I'm just here to enlighten people and awaken as many people as I could. So what we're gonna talk about today is this. We're gonna talk about a few things that for one, I'm gonna tell y'all a little story how I came into this conscious stuff. It's one day, I mean, since a kid, I always been in tune with like ghosts, ETs, stuff to that nature. So I always been like the type of guy that's always been doing Little weird sci-fi stuff, calling psychic networks, um, always looking in the sky, parents always calling me weird. Always was felt like I was different. I go to sleep, I I dream, I get to a top of a building and right before I land, I'm in a bed. Sometimes I, I knew I was dreaming. These were all early signs of coming awaken and that you have a calling over your life. The chosen one. I didn't believe at first, but through life, I went through mad trials and tribulations, mad ups and downs. But through my worst of times, I always had something that was here to save me. Or like guided me, or like worked with me at times when things was the worst for me. Meaning like every situation I ever got into, I always got out of that situation. But um, that's what I went through. I'm only telling y'all this because if you some type of person from the streets and you from the hood, you know what I mean, and your intuition is on point, your intuitive system, meaning when you think about somebody, like, yo, I could just be talking about you and they pop up or they call you. Those are all times of your intuitive system, of your intuitive system and something called synchronicity. Meaning, that person thought and your thought matched the same frequency at the same time and connected instantly. Your thought came into reality. Now, that happens a lot throughout your life. You may smell something and they be like, yo, I feel like this is this happened before, like, like you said the same thing. Because what's happening is you starting to remember the cycle that you're constantly been living. Sorry about that, brief interruption. But as I was saying, You gonna know when you on some spiritual shit. Or when you on when you got a purpose. Because the deja vu things that start to happen to you. And you're gonna start to realize that you have been in the same repeated cycle over and over and over again. That's why you're getting bored. That's why some of your memory is coming back that you're starting to realize that, yo, I've been here before. This is nothing new to me. Because it's not. And what you need to do is break the cycle. 
So they asked me, King Prince, King Prince, Aunt Mills, Aunt Mills, Mills, Anthony, Anthony, how do I break the cycle? How do I break the cycle? And I'm looking at them like, nigga, miss, ma'am, mister, dude. You can't break, only you know how to break the cycle. I don't know what the cycle that you keep repeating, but you know that light inside of you or that little, 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 dim, little thought. I said, yo, what if you could have just be this? And that little fantasy ending you see, maybe if you try doing that, that'll break the cycle. Maybe you always starting something and not finishing is the cycle continuing. Maybe you having deja vus because you still walking down the same path. You haven't done nothing new in this lifetime that you haven't done a hundred thousand years ago, a hundred years ago. Over and over and over again. Maybe you're doing the same thing over and over again in another dimension, in other dimensions. So when those little type of synchronicities started to happen to me in my life and those little deja vus, I started to awaken to make me feel like this is something more than this world, than what I see. I know it's a way I could get what I want, but it's like, I just can't get it. I always felt like that, and I don't feel like that anymore, but I used to feel like that, and I tried so many different things from seminars to psychics to terror readings to church to to Muslim to um what Luciferian I mean Buddha I mean I try everything but I never tried what I wanted to do I always tried wow see that oh trash bro I always tried I always tried to like I always tried to like just you know make the best out of a bad situation You know, and I always kept pushing because I always knew like, yo, I meant to do this. I meant to do that. I got all these ideas, but I just can't get there. I just can't get there. And like so much shit happened to me that made me change. Like, for instance, one time a lady, I'm, um going to one of my homeboys crib and shit like nigga from Hollis is when I used to live in Queens and shit and New York City and shit I'm on, I mean I'm on Linden and shit you know I'm on I'm on Murdoch I'm on Murdoch and like 201st and Murdoch crossing the street to 202 to 202nd heading down like 115 right off of Francis Lewis headed down going towards Hollis Cause my man, he lived on like right around from IS 192. They still call it the Deuce. I think they call it something else now, for real. But that L that junior high school, he lived right around the corner from my junior high school. So I went down there, but as I'm crossing the street, right, is this old lady, and she's like, "Yo," she's like, "Yo, um, 
can you help me across the street? I mean, I don't think nothing of it. I helped the lady across the street. And she, like, look in my eyes, and she's like, you got the most precious eyes. Like, it's all in your eyes. She was like, do the right thing. You know, don't do what your friend's doing. Then one other time and shit, I can't remember if, like, if I was cutting school or if, like, I was cutting school by myself or something. Met this other old lady on the bus. She's like, hey, the world coming to an end. Don't do what your friends do. If they cutting and stuff, you don't cut just like them. Because when times come and things change, them people going to be going a different way. And you going a different way. And I used to be like, why is she saying that to me? Like, I don't know. I'm bored cutting school to do nothing. So I went through a lot of stuff like that. <coughs> um, what else? For instincts, what else I went through? I mean, Fast forward, I'm in Virginia. I'm with like my second kid's mother. I ain't disclosing her name because I don't need them getting no clout. Um, <laughs> but I'm with my second kid's mother and stuff. So I had rent due. And I'm like, dang, how am I gonna pay the rent? I'm praying to God. You know, because my mom's is a Christian or whatever. So, you know, we believe in God, Jesus Christ. That's what she taught me. So I'm praying to God, you know, and I'm like, God, I need to pay this rent, but I'm not even going to worry about it. I know if I don't worry about it and I just go on life being me. Then I'm going to be good somehow, some way at the end of the month, I get the money to pay it. So I made that notation to the sky, to the universe, to my God. And what happened was I forgot about it. By the time the end of the month come, I mean, like, I'm not worrying at all how I'm going to pay the rent. I'm just living life like my rent is already paid. I was going to school, community college at the time. I was going for my um, business administration degree. It was a school called um, Melamont. No, no, no. No, it wasn't Melamont. It was um, some type of community college. Can't remember what community college it was. But anyways, a familiar community college down south in Lynchburg, whatever, in Virginia. So, I, um, I'm coming home from school, you know. I had like about $10 in my pocket. But where I lived at out there was like kind of far. So, really, if, you, if I had somebody to give me a ride, I wouldn't have, they probably would have wanted more than $10. But I had something to offer. So, you know, I'm out of the school. You know, I'm, I've done classes. I walk down to the store. It's a little gas station store. I go stand in front of the store. And my son coming home from school. I stand, in, I stand in front of the store. And, you know, and it's like. Talking to my girl on the phone, I'm like, yo, I don't know how I'm going to get a ride. You know what I mean? I'm going to find a ride. I'm going to ask somebody. So I see a random older guy, and I ask him for a ride. The guy asks me where I got to go. He says, well, how much it was? How much? I was like, yeah, I got $10. He said, they ain't going to get you nowhere but, like, to the training school. What up, man? How was school? Yeah, so like I was saying, talking to the guy, 
asking him, could I get a ride to, like, maybe, like, five miles down the road? You know, five, ten miles down the road. If that, yeah, about eight miles, seven miles. <laughs> you know, but anyway. So, he's like, nah, I ain't giving you no ride. You know what I mean? Like, get out of here. I ain't giving you no ride. You know what I mean? I could have got nasty with the guy. Like, nigga, I'll smack the shit out you. You don't give me a ride, bitch. But I ain't act no fucking fool like that. I just told Shorty, like, yo, he fronted on me, yo. He was talking crap to me. You know what I mean? I went in the store because I was a little embarrassed. Let it go. I let it flow right off of me. What up? It was lit. It was lit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, homework for all that. You said you got homework? Not much, though. I did much of it in class. You want me to just cut your hair? Because I got the clippers just to shave the side. I can't give you no line. I need a line. That's what I need. That's so what I need. We'll to Friday. All right, where was I? All right. All right, so where was we? Yeah, so, like I was saying, um, so what I was saying, let me, can you see me a little bit? Let's make sure that's kind of clear. Yeah, I'll go back. Yeah, I had on these chains and stuff. I, I took them off while I was in the house eating. Need some fettuccine and broccoli. But, um, where was I? Was at the store. Told Shorty Dude fronted on me. You know what I mean? Could have cursed him out, but I didn't. Went in the store, totally forgot about it. Came back outside. Came back outside. And I told the girl I was with, I told her, I was like, yo, all right, I'm going to try to figure out something. I'll call you back. Hung up the phone with her. Right when I hung up the phone with her, he called me. He was like, hey, come here. He was like, I'll take you. I guess what it was, he must have felt bad or something like that. Or maybe my energy, a positive energy, overseeded his negative emotion at the time. So he felt compassion in his heart. And he felt like, dang, maybe I shouldn't have said that to him. So he felt like, oh, let me give him a ride. So, you know, I'm in the car with the guy, having a normal conversation to, you know, pass the time by to not seem like a dickhead. You know why he's giving me a ride on the way there, especially because he threatened to say he'll drop me off at the time at uh, the training school since you know I only had ten hours. So yeah, you know me and him get to talking. I tell him what I'm in school for. You know I tell him I got a daughter and all of that good stuff. And I'm originally from New York. And I told him I had a car because I did have a car. I had an Audi at the time. I had an A6, but um, my motor had blue. That's what it was. My motor had blue in that Audi. And I was trying to, you know, get some money to basically get another motor. So I'm telling the guy all of this type of things, you know. And so he's like, you know, yeah, um, I guess he tells me like, hey, man, I give you the money for your motor. You know what I mean? Just call me on the second Thursday of the month. I give you the money for the motor. How much is the motor? I was like, it was a thousand dollars, and it was like a thousand dollars to put it in. So I had to come up with two bands. So he was like, yo, I give you a thousand dollars for you to put it in, and you come up with the other thousand dollars. He said, I give you a thousand for the motor, give me the other thousand to put it in. I find the other thousand to put it in. So I, he was like, I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? I didn't say whatever, but I was like, okay. 
But of course, being a person I wasn't, I wasn't going to call the guy on no second Thursday thinking that he was really going to give me a thousand dollars. Even if he did, I was still going to kind of feel like I didn't deserve it because like who give anybody a thousand dollars that they don't know. So the guy he gives me a ride home and um, he give me his number and he starts to tell me that he hit the lottery for a million dollars. And that he get a check every second Thursday of the month. So I'm going to go get the math here. So he gets a check. And so he said he got grandkids. So he told me to just call him, you know, when I was ready. Just call him on Thursday. He would give me the $1,000. He hit a million dollars on a scratch ticket. And he had a, he said he was in like a Caprice car with some rims on it. He was like, you know, yeah, this is this is his nephew called. He was a drug dealer. And he got locked up for a while. And so he souped up the car for him. And he only drove the car. Like, he put it in car shows. I still know the guy's name, too. His name is Donnie Taylor. So... You know, I get home... Tell my girl about it. Tell her I met this guy, gave me a ride. Say he hit a million dollars off a $20 scratch off ticket. He told me to call him on next Thursday. He was going to give me $1,000 for me to get a motor. My rent was only $500. But it never rang the bell on me that I sent that thought out to the universe in the beginning of the month. This, this is, has a thought on me yet. I still didn't never... I didn't know. I was still optimistic. I can't say that I didn't think I was going to get it. I didn't know if he was going to do it or not. So, um, what happened was, I called my mom, told my mother about it. She told me, like, oh, nobody's going to give you $1,000 for no reason. Nobody's just not going to give you $1,000 for nothing. That guy's going to try to do something to you. You sure? Don't get in the car with him. Da 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 da. Real skeptical. I get it. She just was trying to protect her son. She didn't want that harm to come in. But I kept telling her, like, nah, Ma, I don't think this guy's like that. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't ask for it. Like, I didn't mention anything about it. So, you know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, well, whatever. Kind of, you know, felt less confident and kind of made me didn't believe that the guy was going to give it to me. But, so really, not but, but, so. So I wasn't gonna call him, right? But he actually called me on Wednesday. Called me on Wednesday. And he was like, make sure you call me tomorrow when I get that money. So I surely called the guy the next day. And surely, like the guy said, he showed up at my doorstep, rung the doorbell, I opened the door. He held his hand out. He had 50 20s and gave me $1,000. I said, come in. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't need to come in. Um, my girlfriend was standing right there. She said, he told her, now you cook him a dinner and you treat him good now, something like that. And the guy left. That's when I, that was another, that was, one situation where I knew there was something else to this than what I was told.
And not to even mention about two weeks later that God wound up giving me another $500. Long story short, I definitely did pay that $500 for my rent. And paid the um, $500 to get my motor for that car, for that Audi. I wound up needing another motor and all that shit, but whatever. So... Things like that to happen another time. I'm coming down the freeway. It's like 55 miles per hour. I'm doing like 70, 70, 75, 65, 70. All of a sudden, the police car come from behind me with its lights on, flashing. I got like. I know I got a lot of weed in the trunk of my car. And I was smoking or something like that. I started praying, 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 praying. And the, and, the, and the police car went around me and went off the exit. Over and over again, I could recall miracle moments in my life where certain things came in manifestation instantly. And times, I remember another time, I was in Far Rockaway. I'm at my man crib, you know what I mean, down the block. I think they was like Crips. I was like a blood at the time, hanging out with some other little bloods. But here come the leader of the bloods. You know, he wanted to talk crap to those kids, impress those kids, but I was maybe like five, six years older than him. I was probably like 21, 22 at the time. Long story short, got into a fight with the leader, beat the leader up, Everybody thought the leader was going to beat me up. I mean, like, it was like all the odds was against me. It was just 15 of them and just one of me. Maybe one person really wanted me to win. But everybody else was like, yeah, can't wait to see Mills get beat up. Oh, no, no, well, they used to call me East to the West then. Right before I rock away. So long story short, I, I, I beat the shit out of the guy. And... I mean, I knocked him back so far, they, they they couldn't believe how fucking far he flew back because here I am, this little nice short 5'7 guy, what, maybe 160 pounds, 165 pounds, and here this guy is, what, 6'2", 6'3", you know, 6'2", 6'3". <coughs> Ugly face, oh, I got his face all tooted up. Name is LA. Face all tooted up, gruesome. You know, I used to talk all this crazy shit. Black on Mac on, did 10 years in the box. You know, I mean, some people scared him. I mean, the way I like hit this guy, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, if anybody know me, they know I'm left handed. Now you know that, you better watch out, because I'll fucking trick you and hit you with a. Boom! And it'd be lights out for you because you were sleeping. And that's what he did. But I felt the, like another force. Like I felt my hand hit his face. Boom. Then I felt like something else go like this. Boom. And the man just flew back. Shh. Boom. He started looking around. As if it was more people with me. And it was just me. People's looking at, the, everybody was jumping up and around. I mean, they were screaming. He got back up off the ground, wound up just like beating the shit out of this guy. To the point where, like, 
he didn't want to fight anymore. He went in his car to like go home, like quit. He was out of the gangs. He was done. He got his ass whooped so bad. He said, fuck all these niggas out here. I don't care. They see me tucking my tail. This nigga's busting my ass. I, I I can't. I don't know what to do. I try to flip him. He reversed it in the air and flipped me. I mean, we was just busting ass out there. And they jumped me. I ran down the block, which I, I probably could have fought every last one of them and whooped all their ass. But my uncle told me, he's like, yo, after you fight a dude, and you whip his ass, get out of there. He said, I don't care if you got to run, run, nigga, because they're going to jump your ass. And when I went to put my shirt over my head after I beat his ass up and he went to get in his car, I was like, yeah, you ain't no fucking blood. Da, 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 da. I guess that's where they really got mad. And when I was putting my shirt over my head, here they come, my head. Like, oh, here come, like, this other guy, you know what I mean, Toddy. And shit, rest in peace of Toddy. And they like, oh, here come Toddy, uh. So, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking swinging on him. Shoom, 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 shoom. I got this shit off my head, over my head and shit. And... Yeah, they fucked me up. I ran down the block, hopped on my mother gate, fell on the ground. I was drunk, just got tired of my fell on the ground, he jumped over me, man. I start me a little bit. Nigga, I got up off the ground. Seen the nigga LA that I was trying to fight. Went and tried to punch that nigga again while he was jumping over the gate. Screaming for my mother, telling her to go get the gun. Having a conversation I'm getting jumped having a conversation with my mother, so. I guess it wasn't that effective. I still could like conversate with my mother from the balcony, I, you know, but they was trying to jump me. <laughs> but yeah, the moral of the story was, I don't think it was just me out there fighting. I believe I had a gang of forces behind me fighting with me. My guardian angels, my ancestors, the loved ones that I think about and I like candles for, but I didn't do that then. But there was something. So, and then of course to this day, like me in LA is good. I done went back to Far Rockway, seen him and all of that. Hey, was ready to fight him again? You know what he said? He opened up his arms and he said, I love you. It ain't too many us real niggas alive. Cause like the niggas that jumped me died. They all died. Tragic deaths. Like natural causes of death and some of them didn't, but like, not like natural causes of death, like tragedies, I mean. Like R.P. Toddy, he had a head-on-head -head collision with a dollar van. He was the main nigga who jumped me. A couple more niggas got killed over there. One dude was robbing a nigga, turn around, and they, he pull out. He was robbing a nigga, a nigga turn around, pull out a gun. He didn't take the nigga, he didn't pat him down, they killed him. I believe no one of them other kids got like shot and killed. My nigga Big Chopper, he had to belt 50, so. Like, shit happens to people. So, if you've been a person I always feel like, yo, yo, I know what you mean, yo. Like, you know what I mean? I was in a room when they get all, everybody getting robbed in the room, except me. And I got the most money in the room. Like, where shit like that? Uh, niggas is waiting for me to come back with the big ass bag to rob and kill me and my mans. And I get a fucking pain in my leg. 
that don't make me show up, and I'm normally showing up nine times out of ten, my man get robbed. Long story short, my man blamed this shit on me like I had something to do with it. It's a family. You don't mix money and family together. It don't work out. You want to cheat over everything. And that's where they fuck up at. And that's what they get, forget. That's where I don't rap. Could never fucking call me a rat. Check my fucking stats. But yeah. Pay attention to your signs. Pay attention to God trying to talk to you. God is always knocking on the door. He always knocking on your heart. I know he always been knocking on mine. Every time I talk about him, the light shine. It's not a coincidence. Just look up in the sky and you'll see what I see. Sunny days, prosperity, growth, wealth, health, abundance, love, family, commitment. But you can't get that you got negative people around you, if you're constantly watching TV, putting the wrong thing in your subconscious mind, you sleep with the TV on, you sleep with the radio on, you drive in the car with music all the time. When do you give your subconscious mind a break? When do you decide what you want to put in your mind? Famous words of Earl Nightingale. If you don't. If you don't control your subconscious mind. If you don't control your mind. Somebody else will. And that's a fact. Whether it be TV. Social media. Your phone, or your friends, or your parents, or computer. <laughs> you know? Pay attention to what you're putting in your brain. Pay attention to the things you're listening to while you sleep. Pay attention to what your friends say to you every time they see you. Do they talk about problems or do they talk about happiness? Do they talk about them winning or do they talk about them losing? One thing about me, you don't never know if I got money or not, if I'm up or down. Because shit, when you see me, I might look down and I'm all the way up. And then when I'm up, I might be all the way down. The key to it is, is keeping a balanced energy through the best of times, through the worst of times. 